just want to ask the question, has anybody been up to the lake? This up to the lake thing, if you're not from here, you kind of go, huh? That's a really big lake. Uh, I was up at the lake last week. It, 23 years in a row, same place, same group of people, basically. There's a lot of little new ones that weren't there 23 years ago. Father-in-law is 86, the young, fourth generation, youngest one, nine months. Um, it was lousy weather. It gave me a lot of time to do things that I don't normally do when I'm up the lake. We just spent a lot of time doing kind of nothing. And as I was, the week went on, I got a chance to think about my work and what was going on in my life, and I started to get really excited about this week. There's just been a lot of cool stuff going on. I have a lot of great coaching engagements, a couple of speaking things, some work with the executive team, meeting on a book project, and, of course, today. But then Sunday night, Melinda and I uh, got notice that there were two deaths inside people that we know well from our circle of friends. So in the middle of this week, we had to jam in a Tuesday night funeral and a Wednesday morning funeral. So in 24 hours, we, uh, we buried a 28-year-old girl who was recently married, who was just a dynamic person that everybody, everyone who knew her loved her. That was exhausting. Wednesday morning, we buried um, the wife of one of my favorite friends from business uh, who had a very painful five-year battle with cancer. And so in sitting back and reflecting on the breakfast here today, it just reminded me that one of the things that we all share in common that is completely obvious is that we're aging. <laughs> Time passes, right? I just turned 50, and it's kind of weird that I've been to five funerals since I just turned 50. I was thinking, some of you in this room, as I was thinking, okay, some of you in this room have reminded me that turning 50, I'm still yet a kid. But then I was also thinking about, what was I doing at 28? What were you doing at 28? I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine when I was 28 about how we couldn't wait to be 30. Because 30 meant credibility in the business world. What the heck was I thinking, right? Now at 50, I'm saying, huh. If I'm going to pass sometime this decade, I got a lot of work to do. We chose to use this phrase, carpe diem, for a reason. It means seize the day. But it also can mean a lot of other things, too, in that context, right? So whether we like it or not, time is passing. And when we walk out the door here, it's really, really close to autumn. And autumn is the season of harvest around here. And as I think about what we're asking you to do by being a part of the good leadership movement, part of this is really simple. What I'm asking you to do is to harvest all the riches that are around you and use those to radiate goodness. Carpe diem. It means seize the day, but it also could mean radiate goodness today, right? We asked you to be here because we believe when good leaders get together and work together with good intention, that's when great things are possible. Thank you so much for being here.